So a couple of things I, I want to talk to you about. Um, the first is this idea that Say's Law and Keynesian economics are mutually exclusive. Um, no. <laughs> you know, they're both forcing factors in the economy. If you've studied the climate at all, I don't know, maybe you're another climate denier and don't understand what a forcing factor is. But a forcing factor, there are many factors that contribute to the state of the economy. And Say's Law is one of them, okay? Uh, Keynesian economics is another. Say's Law has a destabilizing effect. Keynesian economics has a stabilizing effect, okay? When it's done properly, okay? Now, it's, Republicans did the exact opposite. They did inverted Keynesian economics. They pumped money into the economy when it was doing well, when they should have been saving, okay? When consumers were spending, they, they decided they were going to amp up government spending, okay? They did reverse Keynesian economics, so they helped make it unstable too. Keynesian economics, when it's inverted, can be a destabilizing factor, okay? Um, so, uh, in terms of what actually caused the recession, well, there are these forcing factors. There's the negative Keynesian economics the Republicans practice with their deficit spending uh, <laughs> during the Bush administration, uh, plus there's let, let's say the Say's Law that went into uh, allocating resources for building more housing, which turned out to be a bubble, you know, that's another forcing factor. Another forcing factor is Wall Street intentionally pumping the market with bad mortgages and then betting on it to fail, okay? I would say that last one, the latter, is the most significant forcing factor in the whole thing, okay? It certainly caused the other forcing factors, right? It certainly caused Say's Law, because had it not been for the, shall we say, erroneous messaging of the value of real estate, then the misallocation of resources into the housing market would not have happened, okay? So the banks caused Say's Law, okay? By intentionally pumping bad mortgages into the market and then betting on it to fail, so. I blame the banks, okay? It's not some abstract thing. It was Goldman Sachs, all right? Um, and there's, there's nothing that Wall Street loves better than market instability. You know, Wall Street lives to move money from here to there. That's all they do, buying and selling. They move money around. And the more money they can move, the more money they make, okay? It's as simple as that. They make money moving it from here to there, and from there to here, and sideways, and all around. You know, buying and selling, the more market instability they can create, the more stuff gets moved around, the more money they make, okay? And that's, that's what they're trying to do. They, they want market instability. They want the economy to go through boom and bust cycles. That's how they make their money. That's how they make a killing, all right? They bet on it to boom, then they bet on it to fail, and they make money both directions, okay? If it were stable, there'd be nothing to bet on, all right? It, if nothing moved, there'd be nothing to bet on. No money to be made gambling on the economy, all right? Simple as that. They want market instability. Um, so, uh, so the second thing I wanted to discuss uh, was this idea that uh, Democrats are having trouble at the polls because Democrats are introducing these socialist things into Congress and that uh, they're not far enough to the right. You know, I would expect that kind of spin out of a conservative. I mean, it would only go to figure but it just doesn't mesh with reality. If you look at the people who voted for Democrats and voted for Obama in the last election cycle, they voted, they put their passions into a message of change and reform. They didn't want things to go on as they have been with the status quo, okay? And what have we gotten out of the legislature? We've gotten these toothless, neutered, watered-down bills that haven't changed a freaking thing, okay? Not fundamentally. It still allows the big corporations to do 
pretty much what they damn well please. That's not changed. It's easy to see why Democrats have got a little more difficulty getting their passions up about Democrats, okay, about Democrat candidates. We've heard the change message, but when it hit the legislature, we saw what the Republicans and the Blue Dog Democrats did, and they brought the whole thing to a grinding halt, and whatever was put forward, anything they could put forward, was so watered down and neutered as to be rendered virtually ineffective, ineffectual, okay? So Democrats are, do not think that the, do not think that things have to go further to the right. No, no, there is absolutely no freaking way a Democrat would ever vote for a Republican ever because they're all free market fundamentalist, batshit crazy. Okay, they have no comprehension of how the economy really works. They live in this ideological, idealistic world where capitalism is a system rather than what it really is, which is a game, okay? Capitalism is not a system, it's a game. And like all games, it has an ending. Now, how does it end? Well, if Goldman Sachs has their way, Goldman Sachs will have all the money, okay? That's how it ends, all right? Goldman Sachs wins and everyone else loses, okay? That's the nature of games, my friend. People win and people lose. And with capitalism, the positive feedback loop, the thing that makes it unstable, and the dangerous part about it is that winners get to make the rules, okay? <laughs> There's that positive feedback loop, all right? The winners get to make the rules, and that is what makes capitalism a game with an ending, not a system that self-corrects, okay? Sorry. So, to the extent that, let's say, um, Democrats are less passionate about their candidates running for office this cycle, there may be some who will stay home rather than vote, okay? And that's likely to hurt Democrats. It may cost us some elections, but there's no way, there's no way we've gone further to the right. No, we are disappointed that the Democrats have not delivered on change and on reform on the things we voted them into office for, okay? That's why the Democrats are in trouble, okay? It's not that, it's not that the Republicans offer any kind of competition, no. No, the Democrats uh, don't have any competition from Republicans, but the Republicans, in obstructing, they're just trying to create vast waves of disillusioned Democrats who won't come out to vote. So they're trying to eliminate the competition, okay? Eliminate people voting. And the fewer people that vote, the better Republicans like it, okay? That's all there is to it, you know? And if they can, uh, if they have to sabotage the country to do it, uh, there's nothing stopping them. There's absolutely nothing stopping them. They've got unlimited corporate money they can use now. And they're, they're basically, they're sponsored by, by corporations who want to make sure that you're constantly reminded that the government is fundamentally dysfunctional, okay? So vote for Republicans who will go in and then prove how dysfunctional government really is, okay? There's, there's stooges hired by corporations to go in and prove government is broken, all right? No one in their right mind would vote Republican. It's absolutely insane. So, anyways, uh, I think that's all I'm going to say for now. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Entertaining anyways, if not informative. So, I'll talk to you later. Bye.